Which of these characters is older, Brooke or Haradin? A post-mortem bag of bones or a sprightly young giant? The answer may surprise you, but it probably won't. Because it's Brooke. He's 90 and Haradin is a mere 81. However, what will definitely surprise you are the secrets hidden deep within the much, much older ancient world of One Piece. Hello and welcome to the Ground Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. My name is Liam and I am precisely four Tamas old. Tama being eight and me being four of them equaling the horrifying number of 32. But today we're going to be investigating something even more terrifying than my sheer quantity of time on this planet, which is going to be the sheer quantity of time that the One Piece planet has existed for. Because whilst the bulk of this story may take place between a two to three year modern day time span, this world has an incredibly deep and rich history, dating back hundreds, thousands, and even millions of years. So we're going to explore the ancient world of One Piece. But first, it's present time, because for every video this month, we will be giving away a delightful one piece based gift to a random subscriber. Today's gift is how um, surprisingly heavy. And that's because it is, I mean, firstly, it's, it's poorly wrapped, but uh, it is a complete set of One Piece color walks. The color walks are special art books that compile all of the color spreads and a ton of extra material like interviews with Echiro Oda. There's seven of these in total, and we're just giving them away because, I don't know, why not? Oh my god, this is my favorite one. This. This is one of my favorite color spreads ever. If you'd like to win this set, then you just need to do two things. One, subscribe to the channel, and two, leave a comment answering the following question. What is your favorite color and why? And that is legit it. The winner will be announced in our community section, so go ahead, do the thing, and win the books. All right, let's get into the mood for some history. While there's quite a lot of mystery regarding specifics, the One Piece timeline can be roughly divided into four ages. Kind of like Middle Earth, actually, just with far less elves, and far more men who wear style eggshells as pants. Because the four, that's one, because the four ages of One Piece consist of the Great Age of Piracy. This is the most recent age and the one where all of the Luffy stuff happens, encompassing very modern history over the past couple of decades. Prior to that though, the world was engulfed in what was known as the Age of the Sea Circle, which consists of significantly more stuff happening and extends all the way back into the void century and even slightly beyond. So we're looking at just over a thousand years. But even a thousand years is absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things, because predating that was the Age of Heaven. And this more or less encompasses the birth of human-based civilization over the course of at least 4,000 years and potentially much, much more. The Age of Heaven is where all of the seeds were planted that make the One Piece world what it is today. And when I say seeds being planted, I do mean quite literally in at least one case, but we can go even further back than the Age of Heaven to the earliest known life on the One Piece planet. This age has been named in the series, but you, yeah, I'm talking to you, you are very unlikely to remember it. And we're going to keep that name a mystery for now because I'm pretty sure that's how YouTube works, right? Stay until the end of the video to learn the thing. And in the meantime, well, here are some other things. Going backwards though, we shall begin at the Great Age of Piracy, which I should say is the only age that we have any sort of defined dates for. This age began 24 years ago with the execution of Freddie Mercury's fictional pirate equivalent, Goldie Roger, as following his death, piracy received what can now only be described as a GameStop style boom, in which hundreds of thousands of people all over the world took up becoming professional scallywags in order to become the next pirate king. And in the process, having their eyes open to a whole new lifestyle of relative freedom on the wide open sea. And of course, this influx of human capital directly led to the birth of the four emperors, because this age marked for the first time in history that pirates were able to form empires capable of rivaling the power structure of the world government's navy. However, we should also point out that the Great Age of Piracy is set to become almost certainly the shortest age of the world as the emperor system is currently crumbling before our very eyes, and all vague prophecies seem to point towards Luffy and the Straw Hats being the key to commencing a new fifth age of the planet. But what was the world like before pirates were cool? Well, prior to the Great Age of Piracy, that would be the Age of the Sea Circle. Pirates definitely existed during this time. However, they did so mostly as isolated cells, generally doing a lot more running than they did direct fighting. Albeit with a few key exceptions, such as the Roger Pirates and much more excitingly, the Rocks Pirates. Because 38 years ago during the Age of the Sea Circle would be when the God Valley incident occurred. The fated team up of Roger and Gop to finally quell the threat that was Rocks de Zebec. However, while such an event may have served as the climax of the Age of the Sea Circle, that does not even begin to summarize the grand history of this time, which also included the birth of Monkey D. Gop precisely 78 years ago, and the commencement of the duel between Dory and Brocky 102 years ago. But we can go much further back and we can actually get much bigger than giants. The Age of the Sea Circle was also 
when the famed Oars terrorized the seas, having been born 659 years prior to modern day. And Oars was a member of what is referred to as the ancient giant tribe, who tend to resemble something more demonic than their smaller, humonic counterparts. But ancient giants are a kind of tragic story because by this point in history, they were all but extinct. Oars himself did go on to procreate and his descendant, Little Oars Jr., does currently live in the Great Age of Pirates. But whatever prominence ancient giants had in this world was long past by the time we reached the age of the sea circle. Elsewhere though, this age was highly prosperous for a certain Wano country, as during this time, hundreds of years ago, Wano was known as the land of gold, implying that it may have been one of the wealthiest nations on the planet. And it was said to be persistently targeted by pirates, other kingdoms, and even the world nobles for their wealth. However, one man stopped all of the things that I just said. And that man's name was Shimotsuki Ryuma, who allegedly single-handedly managed to retain Wano's sovereignty, leading to Wano's continued isolation to this very day. And while we don't know exactly when this happened, the fact that the world nobles were mentioned as having targeted Wano does tell us that this Ryuma business happened after the void century because the world nobles didn't actually exist until then. So everything prior to that can be described as a world of absolute bliss because it was a world without the likes of Saint Charles. But the void century is obviously the key event of the age of the sea circle. During this time, 20 kingdoms formed an alliance to wage war against what is currently only known as the Great Kingdom or the Ancient Kingdom, depending on your translation. But this conflict occurred roughly 800 to 900 years ago. And after a long, brutal century, the 20 kingdoms would emerge victorious and form the world government. This also marks the time where Joy Boy lived, the Poneglyphs were created, and potentially even when the ancient weapons were brought into the world, or at the very least when Pluton was created. Interestingly enough though, the age of the sea circle does not stop with the void century. Prior to that, there were a couple of hundred years of various stuff happening, such as the birth of Zunesha, which occurred around a thousand years ago. And this very naughty elephant allegedly committed some sort of grave crime for which he was sentenced to walk the seas for all eternity. Which I don't know, this elephant, he must have done some sickening stuff to receive this, this, this truly harsh punishment. In regards to how this may have happened though, there is a fun idea that Zunesha was sentenced by the former user of Tama's devil fruit, the Kibi Kibi no Mi, who was able to feed Zunesha a Kibi Dango and order him to walk the seas for all eternity, as well as to only act when commanded to by someone else. Because it really does seem like Zunesha is bound by a specific power, whether that is devil fruit related or not, but this is one piece and when something particularly weird happens, it's usually as a result of fruit. But I highly doubt that Zunesha is continuing his punishment as some sort of historical honor system long after the people who sentenced him have assumedly died. Maybe they haven't, but they probably have. But if we take a one century step back to 1,100 years ago, then that would be the time when the golden city of Shandora was built, indicating that this was around the time when the three sky tribes colonized the One Piece planet after descending from their former moon home. Meaning that yes, an awful lot of stuff happened during this particular age. But at this point, you may also be wondering, why is it called the Age of the Sea Circle? And currently, that would be because some guy said so. The some guy in question being named Noland, a man who lived in the latter half of this age and his various journal entries contained very specific dates referring to the name of this age. And this was of course roughly 400 years ago, but even that was very late into the Age of the Sea Circle. And there are a few fun theories out there which state that the term sea circle could be referring to either the Grand Line or the Red Line, both of which circumnavigate the globe. The general idea being that the creation of one or even both of these was labeled as a great sea circle and a new age began due to the radical transformation of global geography. Meaning that the world before this could be described as one big spherical all blue. Quite peaceful and free sounding just as indicated by the name, the Age of Heaven. Now we have no idea when the Age of Heaven began or ended. In fact, it's entirely possible that there was even an age or ages plural between heaven and sea circle. But right now the age of heaven encompasses the formation of human society. For example, this covers events 4,000 years ago when the palace of Alubana was built, meaning that the nation of Alabasta was likely founded around this time. And not only that, but according to Robin, they were likely engaged in near constant war in the ancient days. But going even further back, our first morsel of human recorded history in One Piece is 5,000 years ago when the inhabitants of Ohara planted the tree of knowledge, which 5,000 years later would be destroyed by five old men who feared that the sixth old man would say a word, a bad word that they didn't like. And because of that, one of the oldest known structures in all of the One Piece-dom was destroyed. 
but at the very least, the Tree of Knowledge was far from the oldest. It's also widely speculated by characters within One Piece that the Age of Heaven may have seen the formation of what is now known as the Emperor Cloud or Imperial Cumulus, which we would know as the type of cloud that houses the entire nation of Skypiea and assumedly the various other Sky Islands as well. According to Mont Blanc Cricket, this is a fossilized cloud that is potentially tens of thousands of years old. However, all of this is pure theory from the mouth of a fictional character who is most famous for wearing a literal nut on his head. So there's only so much that we can take his word for it. Also, what's the deal with wearing a chestnut on your head? It's, it's just wrong. But we do know for a fact that there is a truly ancient era that existed prior to the Age of Heaven. In fact, it existed prior to humanity as we know it, and that would be the Dinosaur Age. The only evidence we have of which is the wonderful island of Little Garden. Somehow this singular island managed to retain all of the conditions required for prehistoric life to survive and thrive. And this age is given an official designation by honorary straw hat Nefertari Vivi, who states the Dinosaur Age term. But as for how old this age is, it completely dwarfs the three ages before it combined. Because if it's even remotely similar to our own global history, the Dinosaur Age of One Piece could very well be in the realm of 66 million years old, which may explain why this pterodactyl in particular looks so damn smug because he's an OG life form after all, or at least as O of a G as we can possibly trace back. And even then that creates a massive gap of knowledge because there is still so many global features that we are entirely unable to pinpoint. For example, the sunlight tree Eve. This is most certainly the largest natural structure on the planet aside from the red line and it is nigh on impossible to say at which point it sprang into existence. It could very well have been during the Age of Heaven or the Age of Dinosaurs, but that's as good as saying that it could have been any time between 4,000 years and 66 million years ago. It narrows things down about as much as trying to locate a specific grain of sand somewhere between Australia and South America, which is not very. However, I can very much narrow down your choice of next video to this one, because there's always more to learn, explore, and experience with this wonderful series, so I look forward to seeing you there.